good evening today we shall be dealing with ecg case number 11 in our ecg series title is inferior wall mi post lysis becomes a lateral wall mi what's going on here now this is a fairly uncommon occurrence i have dealt with this case around two times in my career the first time i caused unnecessarily unnecessary cath lab activation the second time because i had the benefit of hindsight i could manage the case appropriately so although it's fairly uncommon you need to know this because if you I uh, don't know you can easily get confused and create a lot of confusion in the ICU so inferior wall mi post lysis becoming a lateral wall mi what's going on here this is a 46 year old male who is diabetic with retrosternal chest pain you can see st elevations in lead 2 3 and avf with uh, reciprocal changes in 1 and avl with a slight st elevation in v1 so this is an inferior wall mi with an rv mi since you have st elevation in 3 more than 2 and uh, avl depression more than avr with an rvmi you can localize it to the proximal rca so is an inferior wall mi with an rvmi due to proximal rca occlusion now this patient was lies with retiplase probably the hospital did not have a cath lab and uh, the patient complained of marked increase in chest pain post lysis this is the ecg taken one hour later This ECG shows ST elevation in one and AVL, with reciprocal changes in two, three, and AVF. So the ST elevations in the inferior leads have completely disappeared, and they are replaced by ST elevations in the lateral leads. So this is a lateral wall MI. So pre lysis, you have an inferior wall MI with ST elevations in the inferior leads. Post lysis, the ST elevation in the inferior leads have disappeared, and now you it has gone for ST elevation in the High lateral leads, so you have a high lateral wall MI. So pre lysis you have an inferior wall MI, post lysis you have a lateral wall MI. Now what has happened here? Obviously, one information you can get is the lysis has probably failed because the patient has marked increase in chest pain. But even if the lysis has failed, the ST elevations are supposed to increase in the corresponding arterial territory. For example, in this case, it should increase in the inferior walls, not in the lateral wall. So what's going on here? so is it due to migration of thrombus is it due to vasospasm in another vessel is it due to simultaneous mi occurring in another vessel is it due to ischemia at a distance or none of the above so it's unlikely to be due to migration of thrombus remember we have localized the pre lysis ecg to the proximal rca high lateral wall mi's are generally due to occlusions of ramus obtuse marginal or diagonals so this is a completely different vessel so thrombus cannot migrate into a different vessel so this is unlikely vasospasm in another vessel yes can occur but simultaneous mi in another vessel again okay, can occur it is rare plaque ruptures have been described in multiple vessels at the same time so it is possible but rare ischemia at a distance again is a possibility where occlusion in one artery can cause ischemic changes in another artery but you have a far more common and logical option for this kind of cases so what is that when in doubt always repeat the ecg so Uh, if you have a doubt about what is going on in the ecg take another ecg you might often get the answer from that so now you see the repeated ecg shows st elevation in 2 3 and avf now the lateral wall mi changes have disappeared instead of now you have st elevations in 2 3 avf with reciprocal changes in 1 and avl now this is again an inferior wall mi the st elevations are more when compared to the pre lysis ecg and combined with the increase in chest pain this is a failed lysis you need to do something about it so you had an inferior wall mi initially which went in for a lateral wall mi now it has again come in for an inferior wall mi how is it possible to explain this so when inferior wall mi becomes a lateral wall mi or vice versa you think of left arm lower limb lead reversal that's the answer so i shall repeat it when inferior wall mi becomes a lateral wall mi or vice versa think left arm left uh, uh, left uh, i mean lower limb lead reversal So this is the Einthoven's triangle, and uh, we have AVR, AVF, and AVL, and along with RA, uh, there is right arm, uh, lower limb, and as well as left arm. So what happens is you flip this triangle by 180 degrees. That is, you turn the triangle around. In that case, what happens is AVL becomes AVF, AVF becomes AVL, one becomes two, and two becomes one, and lead three inwards. So you flip the triangle. That's how you remember the manifestations. So lead three becomes minus three. That is, it becomes inverted. <coughs> lead one and AVL 
Lead one and two switch places. Lead AVL and AVF switch places. Lead AVR remains unchanged. So this is how it is. So one becomes two. Two becomes one. AVL becomes AVF and AVF becomes AVL. In a normal ECG, you might not pick it up because uh, it doesn't cause significant changes except it might cause a slight leftward axis deviation and one becomes more prominent. But it seems to be reasonably normal and it's difficult to pick it up. But this completely changes when you have an MI, especially inferior wall MI. Remember, lead two becomes lead one and one becomes two. So the ST elevation in lead two goes to lead one and the ST depression in one comes to lead two. The ST elevation in AVF goes to AVL and the ST depression in AVL comes to AVF and lead three inwards. So you have now an inferior wall MI converting to a lateral wall MI. That is, you have ST elevations in one, AVL, and depressions in the inferior leads. So remember, the ST elevation in lead two goes to one, and the ST elevation AVF goes to AVL. So that's how you have that lateral wall MI changes coming in, and you have the lead three getting inverted. So when inferior wall MI becomes lateral wall MI, or when lateral wall MI becomes inferior wall MI, the most common thing is you think this uh, left arm and lower limb lead reversal. You can pause this video if you require further understanding. This is a very important phenomenon which will prevent you from unnecessarily activating the cath lab and number two, in order to prevent unnecessary confusion in the ICU. So what do you do for this case? Remember this patient has a failed lysis. The patient has increased in ST elevation as well as increase in pain. So you need to do something about it. So option A, repeat thrombolysis. Option B, rescue PCA. Option C, pharmacoinvasive PCA. Option D, you give 15 milligram of morphine. You can pause the video if required, or you can continue on. So repeat thrombolysis is not the answer. Thrombolysis is usually one and done. You only thrombolyze once. And then after that, you cannot thrombolyze for the next six months. If you require further thrombolysis, you need to do it with another agent. So the option of repeat thrombolysis is wrong. Rescue PCA is the right answer. The artery is closed. You need to open it up. And the best way to do it is to mechanically open it up with a PCI. So rescue PCI is for a failed lysis with a closed artery. Pharmacoinvasive PCA is for a successful lysis. After successful lysis, you take up the patient for an angiogram. After three hours, within 24 hours, to see if there's any residual lesion. That's the difference. Rescue PCA, you take up the patient immediately because the lysis has failed. Pharmacoinvasive, you take them up after three hours, within 24 hours, if the lysis is successful. 15 milligram of morphine, again, uh, previously, we, when we did, at the time in the 1980s, when we did not have any PCA or lysis, people with MI were routinely given morphine. High dose of morphine were given, the patients would sleep for around two to three days, and when they uh, awoke, they would have no pain because the myocardium had completely died off. They would have LV dysfunction without any pain. Again, these were times when you did not have drugs or mechanical interventions. So the obviously the right answer is rescue PCI. So take home messages, one ECG deserves another. When inferior wall MI becomes a lateral wall MI or vice versa, think left arm, lower limb, lead reversal. Now this is more common when you have uh, training institutions teaching paramedicals to take ECGs. So if you are in a fairly big training institution, you might occasionally see these uh, uh, changes like inferior wall becoming a lateral wall and made you to lead reversals. Lead reversals are usually common when uh, people are getting trained to take ECGs. In a failed lysis, take the patient immediately for rescue PCA. This is very important. You don't wait because the artery is closed. The myocardium is undergoing necrosis. You take up the patient immediately. If you don't have a cath lab facility, refer these patients. So please like, share, subscribe. Press the bell icon for further notifications and comment on how you want the channel to go up next. Thank you.